guys! Welcome back to Learner's Haven. For this video, we will learn the classifications of animals and how they are different from each other. This is going to be another opportunity to learn, so let's have fun while learning. Animals can be seen everywhere. They can be seen in water, in forest, in farms, in the sky, sometimes in our homes, or literally everywhere. And they can be classified as vertebrates and invertebrates. Vertebrate animals are the animals that have backbone or vertebrae. There are more or less 65,000 known species of vertebrae animals, but that's just 3% of the total population of animals on our planet. Vertebrate animals include fishes, reptiles, mammals, amphibians, and birds. Let's first have a closer look at fishes. Fishes are the earliest vertebrates. Fishes are cold-blooded. What is cold-blooded? Cold-blooded animals cannot regulate their internal body temperature with the change in the environment, meaning they cannot survive in extreme temperature conditions. Next, fishes breathe with gills and swim with fins. And did you know? Fishes talk to each other through acoustic sounds. And lastly, fishes travel in schools as a way to protect themselves while on a journey. Fishes have three classes, namely, Agnata, or the jawless fish, that do not have scales. Lampreys and hogfish are the examples of Agnata. Next class is Chondrichthys or the cartilaginous fish. They are the fishes that have skeletons primarily composed of cartilage. Examples of this are sharks, rays, and skates. And lastly, the ostictus, or the bony fishes. They are the fishes which have skeletons primarily composed of bone tissues. Examples of this are clownfish, seahorses, eels, trouts, and many more. Just a quick trivia, and fish can have four hearts. Also, they can go for months without eating. Different shark species have different ways to reproduce. There are oviparous or the egg-laying species, and there are viviparous or the life-bearing species. All clowned fish are born male. When the dominant female dies, the dominant male will turn itself into a female. Now, let's have a glance at reptiles. Reptiles are ectoterms, meaning they rely to regulation of their body temperature on external sources like sunlight. Reptiles are not slimy because they do not have sweat glands, so their skin remains cool, dry, and waterproof. And lastly, reptiles can be found in every continent except Antarctica. Some more facts, their metabolism and reproduction depends on temperature. Just like humans, all reptiles use lungs to breathe. And lastly, reptiles shed their skin periodically. The younger they are, the more often they shed. Reptiles have four orders, namely Crocodilia, Spinodontia, Squamata, and Estudines. Now, let's go to mammals. Mammals are endoterms, meaning they can maintain their body temperature. Female mammals have mammary glands, which produce milk for their young ones. All mammals give birth to live babies, except from the duckbill and platypus. All mammals have hair or fur. Mammals are divided into three types. First is the monotremes, 
or the egg-laying mammals. Animals under this type are Echidnas and Platypus. The second type of mammals are the marsupial mammals. They are the pouch mammals. These animals give birth to the barely formed offspring and the baby grows on a pouch on the mother's belly. Some examples are kangaroo, koala, Tasmanian devils, wombats, wallabies, and the rest. The last type is the placental mammals. They are the mammals that have placenta where they nourish their fetus during development. Some examples are lion, tigers, bats, bears, hedgehog, capybara, and many more. Let's now have a closer look at amphibians. All amphibians spend part of their lives in the water and part on land. Amphibians are the most threatened class of animals in nature. But why? It is because of their porous eggs and semi-permeable skins. Too much sun can damage their cells and too much wind can dry their skin. This causes dehydration to them. Amphibians do not like extreme temperatures. That is why many of them hibernate. Amphibian includes frogs, toads, moots, salamanders, and basilians. Now, down to our last mammal group are the birds. Birds have waterproof skins covered in feathers. They don't have teeth. Instead, they have beaks or bills. They are bipedal, meaning they can walk on two legs only. They have a rigid and lightweight skeletons. Birds have a high metabolism that quickly turns their food into usable energy. Now, some trivia about birds. The hummingbird is the smallest bird in the world, while ostrich is the largest one. Domestic chicken is the most common bird. And the most talkative bird in the world is the African gray parrot. Ravens are great at mimicking human speech and sounds. An albatross can sleep while it flies. Owls turn their heads almost 360 degrees, a complete circle, but they cannot move their eyes. The penguin is the only bird that can swim but cannot fly. It is also the only bird that walks upright. That is for the vertebrate animals. Now, it's time to break the ice. Let's identify if the given belongs to fishes, reptiles, mammals, amphibians, or birds. Are you ready, learners? Yes, we are. First up, we have here, elephant. Elephant is a mammal. Are you sure? Yes, we are. You're right. Did you know, learners, that elephants sleep for two to three hours per day only? Next, we have here a seahorse. That's a fish. You're good. Short trivia about this creature, their copoplage capability is superb. Our third given is an eagle, a creature with eight times stronger eyesight compared to humans. Eagle is a bird. You're doing great, learners. Next is a frog. Just a fun fact, we call the group of frogs an army. What is this? It's an amphibian. Correct. Lastly, we have none other than reticulated python. It's a reptile. Yes, it is. In fact, this is the longest reptile in the world. You did a great job, learners. Let's now learn about the invertebrate animals. Invertebrate animals are the exact opposite of vertebrates. They do not have backbones. 
and 90% of all animals are invertebrates. Invertebrate animals are divided into nine groups. They are Phylum Porifera, Phylum Nidarians, Phylum Platyhelminthes, Phylum Echinodermata, Phylum Mollusca, Phylum Nematoda, Phylum Arthropoda, Phylum Annelida, and Phylum Cordata. Let's first learn about the Phylum Porifera. This is much known as the sponges. Sponges have no organs or tissues on their bodies. All porifera are carnivorous. Their favorite food is mostly crustaceans or the crabs. Some tropical and deep ocean sponges can live for 200 years or more. Sponges can change the shape of their bodies. Some examples of porifera are cycan, cleona, and spongilia. Next group is called phylum nidarians. Nidarians are soft-bodied, stingy animals. They are also known as coelanterates. Nidarians have an incomplete digestive system. With only one opening, the gastrovascular cavity serves as both a mouth and an anus. Just like Praveras, Nidarians are also carnivores. They usually eat plankton and other small organisms in the water. Some examples of Nidarians are jellyfish, sea anemone, green coral, and the rest. Now, we have here Phylum platyhelminthes. Platyhelminthes are commonly known as the flatworms or tapeworms. They are hermaphrodites, meaning both male and female organs are present in the same body. Tapeworms, liver fluke, and freshwater flatworms are some examples of platyhelminthes. Let's now talk about the phylum Echinodermata. Echinoderms are exclusively marine animals that have unique shaped bodies. These organisms are spiny skin. Echinoderms are efficient scavengers of decaying matter on the seafloor. They have the ability to regulate their missing body parts. And lastly, echinoderms don't have blood. They have what's called a water vascular system instead. The water vascular system replaces the duties of a different animal's blood and veins by carrying oxygen to the vital organs. Starfish sea cucumber, sun dollars, and the rest are examples of phylum echinodermata. Other invertebrate animals belong to phylum mollusca. They are the sluggish invertebrates with a thin, fleshy envelope or mantle covering the visceral organs. Their body is covered by a calcareous shell. Their heads are composed of tentacles and compound eyes. Mollusks can't walk. They move by swimming or slithering. Natural pearls are formed within this mollusk. An oyster can take about five years just to make one pearl. Phylum mollusca's examples are cuttlefish, oyster, clam, and many more. Next on the list is the phylum nematoda. Nematodes are among the most abundant animals on earth commonly known as roundworms. They are cylindrical in shape. Nematodes are best known for their damaging effects on crops and they are also abundant in freshwater environments. Ascaris and human thin worms are some of its examples. Next, we have here the phylum arthropoda. The name arthropoda means jointed legs. This is the largest phylum in the animal kingdom. More or less, about 84% of all known species of animals are members of this phylum. Their body is divided into head, thorax, and abdomen. They can be found in all types of habitats. The body cavity is filled with blood and is called the hemocode. The blood is a white in color. Some examples of this phylum are ants, dragonflies, bees, spiders, 
scorpions, and centipedes. We also have here shrimps, frogs, and lobster. This time, I'll introduce you to phylum Annelida. Annelids are commonly known as segmented worms or ringworms. Their body contains hemoglobin, which gives them a red color. Regeneration is a very common characteristic of the annelids. Annelids can either have distinct male or female forms or be a hemaprodite. Lich and earthworms are some of the examples of annelida. Lastly, we have here phylum chordata. These are the animals that have dorsal notochords. A notochord is a cartilage-like rod that serves as a supportive function by providing a site of attachment for muscles. The examples of chordata include tourniquets and lancelets. That's it for the invertebrates. Now that we learn both about vertebrate and invertebrate animals, it's time for a short exercise. Let's identify if the given animal is a vertebrate or an invertebrate. For our first item, it's a hammerhead shark. Is this a vertebrate or invertebrate? It's vertebrate. Correct. Next, we have here lich. It's an invertebrate. You're right. Our third animal is a starfish. Again, it's an invertebrate. Good job! For our fourth item, it's a penguin. It's a vertebrate animal. We're doing great, learners. And for our last item, it's an octopus. It's an invertebrate. Job well done, learners! That's all for this video, learners. But before we end up, just a friendly reminder, never look at your flaws as a weakness. Instead, always consider it as an opportunity to grow and learn new things. Thank you, learners. Please like, subscribe, and share this video to your friends and classmates. And kindly hit the bell if you want to be notified every time we upload new videos. Also, if you have a topic that you want us to discuss, just comment down under the discussion tab or follow us on our Facebook fan page at It's Learners Haven Official and we will be more than willing to create a video for you. See you next time, learners! Mm -hmm.